Hey, it's Chris from Leisure Games. Um, we're going to try a different title this time. This is going to be Fool's Gambit. I am your fool, and the gambit is crowdfunding and backing and Kickstarter in general. So let's take a look. Tonight's topic is actually going to be Bardsong. Now, Bardsong has just over a week left in the campaign. It's by Steamforge Games, if you weren't aware already. And it's over 600,000 US dollars right now. I've already put a video out detailing extensively what mechanics they were bringing to the table, what to expect sort of uh, pre-campaign wise, and where I thought it might go. So check that out if you really want more information. Check out the Kickstarter page if you want more exact details. Where's my head at? Am I going to be backing it? Am I not going to be backing it? Let's take a little bit closer look. I'm specifically doing this update timed because they just released the rule book tonight. Why is this important? Because this is the nuts and bolts of what this game is. This gives you the ins and outs of what you're going to be doing, how things are going to flow, what sort of twists and mechanics are out. So I read through this this afternoon. Based on this rule book, I think that they hit what they were going for. This is your quick setup, quick to play, almost introductory level learning curve type of dungeon crawler. This is evidenced by just the mere fact of how you're taking your turns and what you can do with three actions. At the same time, they have some very interesting mechanics, including how you're exploring room to room, corridor to corridor, hallway to hallway. And along with that, the aspect cards that define it from other games in a similar genre. What makes this room a unique encounter as opposed to the previous room you were in? What surprised me was the iconography and the amount of it, not only on the hero cards, but also on the enemy cards. What also surprised me in the same realm was how much this reminds me very much of Dungeons & Dragons. If I had not familiarized myself with Dungeons & Dragons prior to the pandemic playing with the group, I would not have known how much overlap there was between the two. For example, you can see that advantage and disadvantage are highly used. Advantage being you roll again and you take the higher number. Disadvantage meaning you roll again and you take the lower of the two. I think the turn order mechanism, marching order, is unique. I enjoy that, especially with Aeon's End, with the variable order in which the players as well as the enemies are going to go. I also think that the wandering monster is a very unique concept. And I like the inclusion of these very strong monsters, sort of like in D&D, &D, that if you just stumble upon them and you play your cards wrong, all of a sudden, as a level 5, you might be facing off against a giant dragon. However, and this is a big however, I do not think the sum of the parts is going to be greater than the individual parts at this point. That, in combination with the previous issues that they've had in game design, ultimately, I believe, is going to make me cancel my pledge. The miniatures are beautiful. The concepts are there. The artwork is fantastic. It's a unique IP, heavily, heavily based on D&D, &D, which I very much enjoy. However, I'm probably, at this point, going to be canceling my pledge. And for almost $200 to get the base game in the expansion, that's not a risk I'm willing to take. And let me be clear, there are gambits I am willing to take on Kickstarter, and I think Kickstarter in general is a gambit. But this is one that I do not feel comfortable with, all things aside. I think the ceiling is high, but I think the basement is also low. Because when I look at this, I think of D&D, &D, and if I want d and I'm going to play D&D, I'm not going to play a dungeon crawler. When I'm playing a dungeon crawler, I want something different enough from D&D &D to make me not think I'm just playing D&D. &D. Going back to the Kickstarter page for a second, let's be clear. It's not due to lack of content. You're getting a lot of stuff. You're getting Kickstarter exclusive stuff. They're hitting stretch goals. You're getting a lot of beautiful looking stuff. The amount of stuff is not the issue in this game. What I was expecting when the rulebook hit was something unique, something to show me that they had truly been able to define their corner, 
their niche within the dungeon crawling genre, and I have not seen it yet. Now, I'm not saying it has to have that, because there are plenty of games out there that do not reinvent the wheel in terms of their mechanics, and they use things that are already out there just in a different way. And I just cannot justify this much money right now in an already brimming collection of mine. And let me be clear, I'm not necessarily putting them at fault or saying this is going to be a bad product. This is not a good product for me. I think this is more of a reflection of how I have also changed as a gamer and where my priorities are and what I'm looking for in a game. And you have to know that about yourself and whatever you're backing, buying, playing, participating in. That's true if it's a video game or a board game or a sport or anything else. You have to know yourself. And I know myself and I'm going to feel more guilt over backing this than I am going to feel loss over canceling it. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on Bardsong. Let me know where you stand. Thanks for watching as always. I am your fool, Chris. Stay classy unless it gets you in trouble. I'll see you next time.